game three and we're still watching from dota tv so i will keep my eye on anything that uh pops up in the bridge because i'm actually not sure if the finals matters or if or if the two teams advance because i i was i was, I was not told but uh yeah i apologize for the confusion don't worry I'm just as confused as you guys are, but here we are. We're in game three between Phoenix now on the Dire and MTD, which apparently stands for Mastodon on the Radiant. Uh, you guys are going to be, you guys are going to be a little bit delayed if you guys watch it in Dota TV or any other stream that was able to get in here. I don't know if there were any. I don't know. Uh, then you will have the full delay list experience. Okay, we're ready, we're ready. What do we got? We got Necropos and the Io Band out because, well, apparently Febby just... Febby just Five ran a train on them with the Io. Lich and Spirit Breaker. Not much else there. Pretty slow draft for right now. It's okay, guys. We're, we're, we're good. We're exactly where we need to be. Kind of. Radiant team pick. Earth Shaker. Okay. Just trying to make sure that I am actually correct in all of this stuff. Trying to also figure out if there's going to be another best of three. I was not told there was or wasn't, but... Uh, Ten seconds remaining. I was told that... For the other region, two teams got through. That was what, when I did SA. So NA, I gotta assume two teams are gonna get through as well. Radiant team pick. But uh, we gotta sell the draft. We gotta sell the draft again. This is delayed. If you wanna go into TV right now, you can watch it without the additional two minutes of delay. You do that. I give you my full permission. I'm gonna be watching here. I'm gonna be joining here. So I hope you guys come and chill out with me there. But uh, yeah, Phoenix, they're back. They got a shaker as their first pick. Now. What MVP Phoenix used to do when they were MVP Phoenix, uh, they would they would throw a whole bunch of curveballs in on the draft. So you know you could assume maybe this is going to be a off lane shaker, but it's still a non-zero chance that uh, we got uh, a little bit of support shaking coming out in this game. Hell, I don't know if they're if MP is even no 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 QO. It would be QO who would have played mid shaker in previous in the previous team Dire fanatic team i don't think he ever did but uh yeah i i think there's a very high chance that this is not a mid shaker and this is probably going to be uh just an off lane at least for right now on the mastodon Radiant side we didn't really get to see all that much from them because you know, it was kind of just an unlucky time to jump into the last game i suppose but Monkey King as well as the Clockwork. That is a very interesting opening. Now, the Clockwork is incredible versus Earthshaker. Monkey King is not too bad either. Just being able to get into his face. Yeah, you take the Fissure. Yeah, you take the spell damage from Shaker's cast. So that's unavoidable. But the fact that you can get on top of him and really force him to throw out those spells without having full Five information early on is really powerful. And, of course, Clockwork has Battery Salt, which we all know is pretty good versus Shaker. Shaker's going to be joined with a Venomancer, though. So we have ourselves a very very high magic damage opening Dire team back. the vision provided to you by venomancer's plague wards really really good versus clockwork and monkey king Does qo now carry an mp mid i assume yes uh, for anyone who is unfamiliar with phoenix at least i'm pretty sure that it's 4f remaining. in the off lane mp mid qo safe lane and then febby and dubu just you know doing support things uh you know whatever it doesn't really matter the distinction there uh mvp phoenix death. used to swap mp and qo from time to time and mp just getting off of secret was the safe lane uh player so you know, he's obviously capable in that. If you, if you play safe lane for Team Secret, I would assume you're a pretty good player. So, yeah, they, they, have, they have some options as far as their flexibility Ten is concerned. Remaining. Puck the ban out. Uh, Shaker and Venomancer again. They're, they're very magic heavy, very initiation heavy. And it's a very powerful opening for sure. It's a opening, though, that, that has some issues, right? First of all, you have to make sure you have vision. You have to make sure you find the enemies before they find you. 
so you're able to land your Echo Slams and your Novas and whatever. If you don't have that, you have to make sure that these heroes have mobility so that you can get in after you get initiated upon in order to land your own spells as well. The Clockwork and Monkey King, they are very, very mobile, very, very vision heavy heroes. It is going to be hard for Venomancer Earthshaker to get the initiation off on their own terms. So that is, that is a slight problem with this. It's not really going to be an impossibility to play around since Shaker, in almost 100% of the games he's played, gets or goes for a Blink Dagger. And Venomancer, kind of the same thing, uh, is trying to get a Force Staff in most of the games that he's played in. And Force Staff, especially in this yeah, game versus the Clockwork versus the Monkey King, at an absolute premium. Probably a non-negotiable item for the Venomancer, at least, at least somewhere in this build. Keeps them very open, though. And for Mastodon as well, they're very, very open with this uh, with this opening set of heroes. They can pretty much go for anything. Monkey King can be put into a core role. We saw some Monkey King supports earlier that were admittedly not all that great, but, you know, whatever. What, what are you going to do? Clockwork, of course, support or in the offlane, depending on what they feel like doing. That's why we see... Uh, Phoenix kind of just keeping Five their ban still just remaining. generic. They ban out the puck and you ban out the silence of heroes that can absolutely destroy your counter initiation or even your initiation proper. So it is uh, just them keeping their team fight hopes and dreams alive. For Mastodon, what they should be doing right now is should try to almost overload on initiation to try to get all the initiation tools they could possibly want ever and just use that to kind of run over Phoenix and hopefully prey on their. Uh, kind of need of Blink Daggers and Force Staff. Try to get in before those heroes have those items. I want to see aggro coming up from Mastodon. I want to see a lot, a lot of aggro. They don't have a lot of time either. They took all of their time so far. And it's a Legion Commander. That is interesting. The Legion Commander is like not the most aggressive hero possible in the game. She does kind of not do all that much until she has level 6. Unless she gets some really sick lanes, I don't think that's going to be happening. Being able to purge off Shaker stuns, being able to purge off some Venomancer slows, it's not all that bad. It's You could definitely do a little bit better, a little bit worse. Uh, it does seem like right now, though, Legion Commander is in an odd spot. Because you're going up against an Earth Shaker already, which is somewhat problematic. Now, she's really good up against Venomancer, but she also has two other melee heroes with her and that's really clunky if you jump in as legion commander you want to have a ranged hero with you who has some sort of damage output the clockwork can somewhat fill that role if he's coming in from a different angle but that's not always going to be happening and even if clockwork comes in even if monkey king come in uh they won't really have all that much damage uh, unless it's a monkey king core which again the possibility is still there but uh these heroes aren't really burst damage heroes and Rubik is the pick, so I mean, it still keeps Monkey King. I think it's a Monkey King safe lane. Legion Commander off, Clockwork Rubik support so far. So we're just looking for a mid lane right now. And that's going to be uh, favorable to Mastodon because they get the last pick. But for Phoenix, they get the Ancient Apparition. Soft counter versus Legion Commander. Very useful hero to have there. But amplify it by picking up a Faceless Void. <coughs> Sorry, guys, I'm dying. I'm dying. I didn't get any water. I don't have anything to drink. I might die during this cast. If I do, send help. Uh, whoever posts Kappa123 as soon as I die, though, they get all my stuff. What is the generic mid lane they're going to pick? It kind of has to be the Queen of Pain, right? Puck is already out. Invoker out. Viper, they themselves banned out. And it's going to add even more to their team fight, that's for sure. Like, Faces Void, AA, Venomancer, Earthshaker, all their ultimates. They will destroy you in a team fight. Rubik's spell steal is going to be really powerful Ten here, but uh, it is going to be Mastodon again with the need to go super Five turbo aggressive and remaining. really try to abuse these long cooldowns. There aren't many heroes that have good matchups or very favorable matchups. Whoa! Okay! Kipo is in the house. Oh, I was going to say there are not many heroes that have favorable matchups versus Meepo. Uh, versus the Queen of Pain, rather. And Meepo still isn't that hero. Meepo does not have a good matchup versus Queen of Pain. But then again, Meepo doesn't have good matchups versus anyone. This is like 50% me talking out of my ass because I'm not a Meepo player. But I have not seen a Meepo really beat someone in lane. Like seriously beat someone in lane without a lot, a lot of help. So Meepo is expected to fall a little bit behind. 
He is going to be difficult to support just with the Rubik and her clockwork. I mean, there are heroes that may be able to kill Queen of Pain. It is definitely a possibility, but you do need the uh, you do need to be able to get in there very quickly and kind of chain stun with a with an Earth Bind. Outside of that, though, how well equipped are they to deal with the Meepo? Earthshaker is good to control the Meepo. Queen of Pain is good to nuke down all the Meepos. As far as as far as that AOE control is concerned, they have it in spades. So if, if they do find a Meepo out in the middle of nowhere, they'll get him. They will be able to kill him off, and it shouldn't be that much of an issue. AOE-wise, they're fine. Single target-wise, they're a little bit lacking. MP on Faceless Void is just inherently not really the highest damage safe lane hero you can get. He is very powerful if you get very far ahead. And in the Chronosphere, get those extra bashes. That's really great if you're fighting one hero. Problem is that Meepo is not one hero. He has several heroes, so you're probably going to be uh, somewhat struggling there. Let me close. I probably want to turn spectator chat off, right? That seems like a good idea. All right, guys, this is again being played in Dota TV. That is where I'm spectating from. If you want, go and look at that. I will not stop you, and I will keep my eye on the bridge because we are watching from Dota TV. We are slightly delayed. There's a chance that this game ends and another lobby goes up for the finals, which, again, I'm pretty sure is not happening. But uh, I will keep my eye on that as much as I can. We got Mastodon playing on the Radiant side. Lucky57 is going to be playing that Meepo. And let me tell you guys, if you are a team that picks up Meepo, I assume your Meepo is godly. Like, it, it, otherwise, you shouldn't be picking up Meepo if you don't have a godly Meepo. We got Giyu playing the Legion Commander with a sick helmet over in bot. We got Jurster, not dead. He's playing the Rubik. Uh, Opiv, o -O -P -I -V? Clockwork, I guess. Something like that. And we got a Monkey King here, too. It's GGW. On the other end, the Phoenix Squad. Rev is going to be playing that off lane Venomancer. We got Qo. Is he on is GG? I don't remember that happening. Uh, he's going to be playing on the Quap. Febby roaming around as the Shaker. We see Boots first on him. Dubu on the AAMP. Mental Protector on the Faceless Void. And it looks like the lanes, at least from the Phoenix side, of exactly what you would expect. From the Macedon side, exactly what you would expect as well. And we can see what this people can do versus the Quap. Again, this isn't going to be a lane where he's going to be bullying the Quap. This isn't going to be a lane where he's working with a significant health advantage. This is a lane, though, where he can, with backup, kill off the Queen of Pain. That is a very real possibility because of how powerful Earthbind is when you have two of them. Till then, though, expect a lot of this. Four-man shield, two tangos, and QO is just going off, man. He doesn't care. He's just going to right-click you with poison and right-clicks and all that good stuff. But again... If you pick up a Meepo, I expect your Meepo player to be godly, so Macedon, please do not disappoint. I wish to see good Meepo play. GU, though. Oof. That's rough, man. Uh, even with no stun here, because the only stun is over in the mid lane. Chilling Touch being able to just run at you. And Legion Commander having gotten the duel. Uh, not duel. <laughs> Moment of Courage, rather. There's not much you can really do about that. Even if you have the heal, you can't really do anything about that. You just kind of have to take it. Clockwork is here now. QO still doesn't give a damn. And, it, okay, we'll, we'll look at the boring lanes first. This is going to be a lane where I doubt anything is going to happen. We got a core farming Monkey King who's going to swat for Ev with the stick along with the Rubik. For Ev, should be fine in most cases unless he gets, like, dragged into tower range or something. Rubik does not have the capability of trading with the Venomancer. It is just not a possibility. Oh, they get a bash! Are you kidding me, MP? Level 1 bash, 10%? Easiest game of his life. They do see Geo, but they also do see that he's salving and tangoing and pretty much at full HP. So they're not going to get the kill, which is a little bit unfortunate, unless we have another bash. Yo, that was, that was, that was stupid, man. That is stupid. Yes. Well, Meepo. Five CS. Oh, uh, there's no HP on QO right now. Double poof. And they got him! You know, when I said that Meepo wasn't good versus Quap, I meant Meepo wasn't, isn't good versus a full health Quap. Once Quap drops to like 40% of her health pool, 
yeah, she's pretty easy to kill. Again, Earthbind is really good. And they, you can make that happen right now if the Rubik is here as well. Clockwork doesn't have any game versus the Quap. That's like a useless hero to have here. But QO was just playing this lane way too aggressively. What can I say? He just wasn't there. Okay, GW, they got him. I did not miss that kill, guys. I totally saw it. I can actually rewind because I'm in Dota TV. I've never used that feature before because I'm never in Dota TV, but yeah, you could do that, I guess. So yeah, uh, Quap just make sure not to take that much creep damage. She's been right-clicking to people a lot, drawing a lot of creep aggro. Gotta watch out for that. Double Earth Bind. How long is that disable? Two, four seconds. Yeah, that's a lot of time where you're just not able to do anything as Quap. Obviously, the only thing you want to do at that point is blink out. Rev level four. Again, this matchup, just 1v1, is really good for the Venomancer. And Jurster here. Is sneaky Rubik. <laughs> yeah, nice. Oh, he's going to lift him up towards the Monkey King. There's only one point in Balanced Strike, so it's a really small stun. He has a Gale. He can turn around and get that out. And he will do just that. Should keep him absolutely safe. But yeah, uh, this is a good matchup versus the Venomancer. Rubik doesn't really add much here. The Monkey King should do okay in this lane. Not fantastic. But, you know, the, the fact that they're together means that they're splitting experience, and Venomancer should be having more or less a free ride. Do you want to keep an eye on this Earthshaker, though? He's been roaming around, is going to find Giyu. And being a level 2 Earthshaker, he can't really do all that much. He really just wants to set up for a kill on this Meepo. And he's been hanging around this mid lane a lot. Ooh, this is... What are you doing here? Uh, this Meepo is coming in. Dubu's going to arrive as well. He's going to cold feet 1. And QO is going to arrive as well. Lucky may have overplayed his hand here. Rubik's going to arrive. Blink scream from QO. Cogs in a bump and back. Meepo's still down though. And Jurster will be right clicked as well. Yeah, no. How did they not right click him though? QO is getting stunned up a lot by the battery assault. QO is down. And the Rubik survives at 15 HP. I, I, okay. You got him. Uh,. It did seem like he was trying to get the right click out, but then the battery salt kept on interrupting it, and then he just snuck into the fog of war. 2-2 two two, though, essentially. Trading the Queen of Pain for the Meepo. And I don't think Meepo's a uh, super high level right now. Yeah, they're, he's not at a point where he's able to just skyrocket in levels yet. Needs a little bit more experience to start that off. Or you could just kill I everyone, QO. That's fine too. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was pretty much a wash of a trade until QO gets another kill and then makes it a little bit better for the Phoenix squad. And now they're not done yet. They have their eyes set on Meepo. And oh, he just used both his poofs, which means he has no counterplay to this whatsoever. As long as a stun lands, it's dead. Uh, that was a really small stun, actually. Sonic Wave will fly through, clip onto Jurster as well. And it looks like they can't finish that off, but they are going to rotate for Ev towards this mid lane as well. There's a lot of heroes over in mid and MP, just doing MP things off in the safe lane. Going to go for that Mask of Madness. Doesn't even have the Chronosphere yet, so it's not time for him to join the fight. So are they actually going to rotate for Ev in? They're, uh, they're going to rotate for Ev into Jurster's face, it seems like. They got him. I lost. It's Arcane Boots really early on for the Shaker and for Ev. Earthbind is a low level, but he still is pretty much guaranteed to land it, right? Did I just jinx it? I'm sorry, man. That was my bad. I still think they got him, though. Fissure is going to wall it off, and here comes the Monkey King and a Rubik. For Ev is still not dead. How is he still not dead? Yes, lift him up. Now he's dead. Uh, the backup is coming in, though. QO does not have a Sonic Wave, which otherwise would have landed onto everyone. Has to instead just leave. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Oh, one second, guys. I think I have to... Oh, no, okay. Just making sure the Twitch title is correct. Because who doesn't want to watch Phoenix, or who doesn't want to watch QO getting beaten to death by Meepos? It's entertaining enough, right? Chronosphere is right around the corner for the Void. Oh, he's not actually here. He used Chronosphere elsewhere up on top lane to just escape. In the meantime, they bring down Febby. Caught Dubu in the battery assault slow. Not quite enough, though. Faceless Void. Chronosphere just to escape... I, I assume just a dual attempt. Radiant no, not a dual attempt either. Legion Commander just doesn't have it yet. 
the little uh, diamond isn't up there for the Legion. But I don't know what happened to MP, but uh, he used his Chronosphere. I thought he was rotating in. Pop, by the way, does survive. Meepo only has uh, level 1 ult right now, so he doesn't have the most Earth Binds in the world. Get a third Earth Bind in there, and I'm pretty sure you kill off the Quap, no big deal. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Tower will be slow pushed by the Venomancer in the meantime. Time is money. You have Mask of Madness being built up on the Void. Still second place in net worth despite not doing anything in this game. I mean, it's what uh, MP has been used to, right? Just left alone on an island. As good or as bad as it gets. That's just how he's been playing. Uh, there is a clockwork here. Is your level 2? Is that it? Yeah. And they do see him. Clockwork is in fact spotted. But with no heavy here, as in no faces void, no queen of pain. Actually getting any kills on anyone who comes in is going to be really tough. As great as plague wards are, they don't really kill heroes that well. They do need an initial hero if they're actually going to start this fight. It doesn't look like they're really super interested in doing that though. I mean, Rubik is coming in. This Rubik is pretty useless with this clockwork Radiant unless they have another hero. Monkey King is coming in. Now that's something that they can fight over. Bebby. He's going to look to wall off the clockwork. Cold Feet is going to proc. Cogs go up, but here comes the monkey. He's going to jump straight in towards the Ancient Apparition. And should just in a couple of hits kill him off. One more. Got him. Of course, top lane though. MP, QO going to team up. Kill off that tier 1. Takes a lot of time just grinding out that tower, and ooh, Monkey King, Fissured, fine, completely fine. No, his jump up is blocked now by the Plague Ward, is hit with the Super Aids as well. Febby will get out of the circle. Wukong's command still ticking away, but he's still taking so much poison damage, so he can't jump out of here just yet. And QO Sonic Wave will get the kill with the Fissure, and will also secure the kill onto the Rubik. And Jiu's just going to peace on out of there. This should kill off the tower in the end. MP in the meantime is still playing his own game. It'll be two towers in total being taken down in favor of Phoenix. What's Meepo up to? Then just jungling and it looks like we got a Chronosphere over on Legion. MP with the Mask of Madness. Never Lucky Bashes finally gets one and he's gonna get the kill. And uh, Febby died to neutrals. He has 800 gold. That was not on purpose. He just got killed by neutrals. <laughs> Whoops. Oh well, it happens. Don't worry, Febby. We didn't see it, so it didn't happen. It's okay. But yeah, Meepo is at that level where he can start skyrocketing experience because uh, he has the clones to do it. Monkey King? Ooh. Quick jump away, dodging the gale, actually. Phoenix are still doing all the right things outside of, you know, actively gunning for the Meepo, who, by the way, is spotted. Bailed up. He's going to try to poop out of there. We'll be fine. Nothing can drop that. Except for Chronosphere and Shaker. They haven't really been able to go for him, but they are going for his map control. And that is maybe not just as good, but it is very close to being just as good. Limit the space, limit the jungle Meepo can get, and suddenly he's not skyrocketing in Golden Experience anymore. And he's ha having to rely more and more on hero kills in order to keep up with the leveling and experience. And you really do need to be ahead as Meepo. If you're on even kill as Meepo, that pretty much means you're behind. Uh, right now, he is not in a perfect spot because QO has been getting so many kills, but it his spot is still certainly very playable. It's very kind of Alchemist-esque. You want to be ahead, so that lets you get more ahead as Meepo. Uh-oh, top is missing. Should probably be fine because there's no chronosphere if there was a chronosphere with jaker there i'm pretty sure that's free legion <coughs> meepo's got defusal soon he just doesn't uh what am i what am i pressing i need a courier yeah he's got a Robe away from Diffusal Blade. He's got an Iron Talon buildup. Really? Radiant structures I wouldn't... Yeah, I'm, again, I'm not a Meepo Radiant's player, guys. I am not good at this hero. Attack. But I would have thought that it would be a little bit late for an Iron Talon. 
if you're already packed in freaking Diffusal Blade. What the hell do I know? Not like you need to destroy trees in this game or anything like that. Uh-oh. Monkey King. Careful, bro. If he gets hit with the ice effect, it just disables his jump. And they do see him. Here's a Chronosphere with his name on it. Kablammy. Look at Febby trying to steal the kill for his Blink Dagger. I mean, it's probably the right play, actually, to give it to Febby, but still. Power either way, we'll be beaten down up on the top lane and bottom lane, but it's a tier 1 for tier 2. And because it's a Venomancer, they don't have to commit a lot to any given push, Phoenix. Set up a little bit of a Plague Ward nest, start chipping away at that tower, and force Mastodon to come and play to them. There is going to be a surprise, though, that's a Legion Commander with a fresh Blink Dagger. And as good as Plague Ward pushing is, again, doesn't really do all that much damage versus heroes. It will behoove them to refill the tanks, get the mana, get the health, at the very least, and wait for another Chronosphere. Eyes are being kept on Roche. Meepo still very quiet in this game. Level 12 has that Diffusal Blade done. Value, just stat-wise, it's, it's really nice. But also having that pseudo disable very useful actually when you're looking for kills like this you don't have to worry about your net being dodged you just kill him Bebby's gonna land an echo slam but it doesn't matter the duel unfortunately is not won by the legion commander echo slam versus meepo is it would seem like it's the perfect thing but it's actually like it's only okay it is only two levels of aftershock he's gone for a fissure based build uh pretty standard like old support shaker stuff here but it's a free two kill on the bottom lane. Definitely exactly what the Meepo ordered. Again, you get this Diffusal Blade, you, your, your power is spiking so high. Because again, you have that Diffusal Blade purge into the net. Very, very hard to miss it from there. Huo is going to run into absolutely everybody. How's the burst? It's good enough. Scream is returned by Jerser, but he's going to die as well. Huo just obliterating that Meepo Rubik combo. There's a flare coming in. Huo still has a little bit of extra haste there. Monkey King is up on top. Hookshot coming in as well as the duel. QO overplayed his hand and he's gonna get punished. Dubu is gonna get the hell out of there. Classic Korean Dodo fashion. Gotta wreck some heroes and then go a little bit too far and get wrecked. Still though, they got MP kind of in the background. He's been doing exactly what Faceless Void should do. Uh, the textbook Void is, hey, if you have your ultimate, go for a kill. If you don't, go farm. Ooh, GGW takes a lot of poison damage here. Is he dead? He's gonna be close. Sal doesn't do anything. Poison Sting got him. For Ev, all the way from up top, is going to get the kill. And hey, they have eyes on another. Uh, that is, it looks like a safe hole for the Rubik. It's not safe. There's a Shaker in there, and Faces Void actually hit him from the other side. Oh, they're going for more? They found a Clockwork. Can't really do all that much as the Gale missed. Yeah, but yeah, MP has been doing the right stuff. Go for kills if you have a Chronosphere. If not, go farm. So a lot of uh, random flashings of Faces Void arriving into the, into the game. Oh god. Wait, 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 wait. What? Uh. Hold up, guys. Uh, Roshan's being taken. You guys can see that. I, I have to figure something out real quick. Because, again, we are, we are uh, working off of extra del delay because of uh, we're, the fact that we're in Dota TV. I thought I just saw... No, okay, we're good. Don't worry, guys. Don't worry about it. Nothing happened. We are 100% okay. Uh, what just happened? We got Aegis, now on MP, still has that Chronosphere locked and loaded, ready to go. Mask of Madness with the best item in the game, Maelstrom. Yeah, it helps you do quite a decent amount of damage. And a target is found. Rubik, level 7. 
not all that tanky right now, and Poison Sting already softening him up. Plague Wards. Look at Rubik, just getting destroyed. Can't MP just kill him? He has a Chronosphere right now. MP just gonna two-shot him. Okay. Oh, that was effective. And oh, they found Meepo! That's not good! Oh, that is really, really bad. I thought Meepo was, like, over in top lane, but they kill off Meepo, which is already bad, but they also kill off Meepo without having to use Chronosphere or Sonic Wave or Echo Slam. They don't have an Echo Slam. No, they do have an Echo Slam. We just got enough mana. Okay, they have Echo Slam mana now, but they have pretty much everything, which means that they can kill the Clockwork right now if they wanted to. It looks like they have no interest in that. They're just going to take the tower. And push forward for more, it looks like. Plague Wards will be set up. Dagger goes out into the clock. They will just start building up this nest of Plague Wards. It's, it's really hard to build it up, though, when your Creep Wave gets obliterated that quickly. And they'll, they'll keep spamming it. Venomancer does not have the, you know, 1 million HP ward talent yet. MP go though going in lands Chronosphere onto two. Here comes the Ice Blast. MP doesn't Aegis. He'll trade that for the Rubik's life. Clockwork as well gets caught in. Lucky's gonna jump in. Mass poofs onto the Queen of Pain, but the Echo Slam from Bebby is gonna return fire in kind, letting QO escape. And now it's GW the Monkey King. His circle is gonna fade and he will go down as well. That's a four kill for Team Phoenix, and just like that, it's over. Radiance Middle Tower. Uh, okay. Well. MVP Phoenix win the game. Uh, now, now I guess I can tell you guys. I saw on the the, the way to spectate face of games. I saw that there was another lobby going up with Phoenix and uh, Pikachu, which is the finals. Uh, but I'm like 80% sure that that game that isn't going to be played because it's top two advance. Uh, so yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure that's the case. But if it's not the case. I will leave the stream on for a few more minutes. What do we take away from this, guys? The MVP, or I keep calling it MVP. God damn it. I'm going to call him MVP for the rest of my life. It's just going to happen. Uh, is that Phoenix is the best team that has, that is existing, has ever existed, or will ever exist. And that is coming from a 100% non biased source. For sure, take that to the bank. They are going to uh, move from the semifinals. Again, I'm not 100% as to whether or not they're in the SLI qualifiers, the uh, closed you know, brackets and whatever, or they have to play another best of three versus uh, Blue Pikachu, which says it's going to be happening 30 minutes ago, but uh, you, know, you never know. So it, it may be happening, it may not be. I will leave the stream on for a little while longer, see if anything goes up. If nothing happens, then I'll just turn the stream off, and if something does come up, then you'll see it. But guys, I'm Mike Lore. It's been a pleasure casting these games for you guys. Sorry for the confusion. Sorry for the late arrival into this uh, Phoenix versus Mastodon set. Uh, but yeah, hopefully we'll see some great things from our Korean overlord soon, guys. I may or may not be right back. We'll see. GG.